back. Better leader, whether that's in business, in sports, or in life. And you haven't found a book yet to help you get to that game-changing aha moment. Well, we have the book for you. Tighten the Lug Nuts, the principles of balanced leadership. Tighten the Lug Nuts will help you get to that game-changing leadership moment. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and iBooks, or at 360managementservices.com. That's the number 360managementservices.com. Pick up your copy today and start changing your leadership styles. Now, it's time for the show. Like work to you. Nah, looking at the lights like it's all that is for me. Everyone tonight is here, all that is for me. Hands in the air, yeah, all that is for me. Bottles over here, all that is for me. For me, all that is for me. For me, all that is for me. For me, life fast, life flash, all that is for me. For me, all that is for me. For me, all that is for me. For me, bottles bringing bottles here, all that is for me. For me, you for real. Hey. All you cool cats and kittens, <laughs> welcome into another edition of the Rome Show, remote location. I'm your host, Andrew Romanella. That's my brother, Rocky Romanella, and special guest joining us on the Rome Show today, Rory Gallagher, um, coming in to give his colorful, is the best way we can describe it, opinions on Rome Show Madness. It is March 30th, 2020. We are all still in quarantine, so yes, we are still in my apartment, but none of the worst, you can still call into the show, 609-807-2492. Get your opinions on. Reach out to us. The Facebook link is live, facebook.com slash andrew.romanella. And then reach out to me on Twitter and Instagram, CoachRomo24. We have quite the show for all of you Romo sapiens today. As you know, okay, Rome Show Madness is in full swing. Full swing. Full swing. Okay? We just completed the round of 32. We have live on show, which we will release in a little bit, the sweet 16 matchups going into this week. And I have to say, I've never gotten so many opinions, <laughs> is the best way I could put it, from the people when you tell them a movie that they like isn't as good as a movie that most other people choose to watch. Correct. I, I, I love the fan interactions right now. Like, I can't tell you. Like, first of all, watching people respond to their picks with yes. gifts of, <laughs> of the movies is great for me. I love that. Well, no, no, no. They're, they're, they're participating. <laughs> Don't get on them. I know. Right? Um, and I also just, oh, uh, wow. That's, those are the difficulties uh, of broadcasting at your house. Down. Hello? I'm a car. <laughs> Uh, that's a little Dan Cook reference. But seriously, the fan interaction has been outstanding. Yes. People are really passionate about mm -hmm. their favorite sports movies. Which is the reason why Rory is on the show today. Because since we've put the field of 68 out on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and started getting people to vote, Rory has been probably, out of every Romo Sapien we have on the show, probably the most interactive to the day. Would you agree? Oh, definitely. 100%. 100%. So what we're going to do, okay... Obviously, we start every show with straight off the rum, okay? I don't know what that is. I'm going to go straight off the rum, thought off the top of my head. Makes sense. All right. We're going to talk a little bit, but then I want to give Rory the floor because he does have a few opinions that he would like to bestow upon the people listening, okay? Straight off the rum today, I have one simple thought. People are very opinionated when it comes to movies. Like... There are topics I hear debated, but one topic I feel like people can really get into a good argument about is a movie. And I've realized that oh, people already don't like when you go against their opinion. right? You say X, I say Y, we don't equal to Z. People get pissed. When it comes to movies, though, like people like get like almost like offended by the fact that you think the natural is a 16 seed, but this guy thinks it's a one seed. It's like, yeah. how could you do that? You disrespectful. And you're like, dude, <laughs> it's a movie, you know? So that's just straight off the roam today. And I feel like, and I want to hear from you people, 609-807-2492, hit the Facebook, the Twitter, or the gram. Phone calls still work. They still work. Ruben's in the studio. Um, Mr. McCrossin taught us that last week. 
hopefully Steven jumps on again. But I want to know your feelings. Because I'm about to get these guys in a second, and fellas, and, and I said, Rory, the floor is yours, but the opinion's off the charts. For mine? Yes. Well, anyone's, but you can give yours now. So I was going to do a take about Rudy, but I have to put that in the back seat right now because I am so upset about Cinderella. <laughs> Warrior was honestly, I mean, offset from Creed and Rocky. Warrior, Warrior is one of the best boxing movies out there. Well, you say Warrior is the best boxing movie out there. I said it's one of the best. Not Mike, the MMA movie, Mike. Mike, it's not about boxing, bro. Although I do agree, right. it should be Jerry Maguire. Stop it. But to reference what Mike is talking about, Jerry Maguire received 81 votes. It's a great movie. Warrior received 75. Tight, yeah. tight matchup. That's a good 8-9. It sounds like we don't sound. I am getting text messages that say people can't. Hey, Rube. Well, Mike just hung up. Ruben, people are saying we don't have any sound. Can we confirm and or deny? Got it. All right, we're going to go on hold. Do we have a piece of paper we can hold up? <laughs> yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> What's he talking about? <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> I called him to be. That was great. Hello? Yes. What's up? Mike, you still on? Did I lose? Oh, shit. Oh, I must have lost you guys, and the uh, my right. connection went like all berserk on me. 
All right, well, we're back. Minor setback there. This is the Rome Show. Andrew Romanella, Rocky Romanella, guest Rory Gallagher. We were working with some technical difficulties. We have Mike McCrossin on the phone. Mike called in, and I'm just going to give a quick recap because I don't know what was heard and what was not heard on the show. Mike called in um, about the Rome Show Madness bracket, and Warrior lost by six votes to Jerry Maguire in an 8-9 matchup, moving Jerry Maguire onto the second round. Mike, not a huge fan of Warrior losing to Jerry Maguire. And, Mike, we, f- we feel you on that one. Our only disappointment with what you said was that Warrior was a boxing movie, with which it's, in fact, a movie. mixed martial arts movie. I got to be honest with you, Mike. I never even saw Warrior. <laughs> but I've seen Jerry Maguire, and Jerry Maguire is... is is an incredible it is. classic. It is. I mean, it, it, it spans generations. If you're a millennial, you watch Jerry Maguire with your parents, and, and the only reason you you think Warriors better is probably because you're in like the gen. You're probably under 26 years old. Well, and it's vintage Tom Cruise. I mean, it, it kind of. I mean, early, early. Oh, you're talking early. about okay, Tom Tom Jerry Maguire. Maguire. Early. Tom Hardy. I mean, it's it's, oh, it's, it's 90s Cruise. It's not 80s Tom Cruise. Yeah, it's 90s. Which is, it's 90s Tom Cruise. And we all we know you're a fan of 80s Tom Cruise. Well, so, listen, I'm not up here complaining that Jason Thunder lost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would have, you know, I would have liked to see it go on. Fair. So. Mike, what else you got for us? I think that's about it because I know my friends who I have three friends that are currently doing this Rome Madness, and they've been texting me the past couple of days, and they've been pretty upset about some of the picks because they've been thinking that, you know, Andrew's the one that's picking the winners, which is not <laughs> the occurrence here. <laughs> All right, so let's clarify for everybody out there because I had some people tweeting at me the other day too, which is great. I love that the people are locked in and they're involved, but it is a combination of votes on Twitter – on Instagram and on Facebook. It is not me choosing, and obviously what people wrote in on their bracket choices. It is 100% not me choosing who moves on. It's you, the people, choosing who moves on. So Mike, if your friends aren't listening, first off, that's bad on them. They should be listening. Secondly, if they aren't listening, which is bad on them, you should tell them that that is the answer. How's that sound? I told him that. I my brother told me last night. My brother's a very knowledgeable person, and he told me last night to tell him that I did. Hey. Right. Well, I appreciate that. You know, my, we appreciate your phone call into the Rome Show, my man. I guess I'll talk to you soon. I guess probably. Maybe call on the Call of Duty. Yeah. There you go. All right, dude. See ya. I mean. I'd like you both to dive into this really quickly, okay? Floor is yours on the Jerry Maguire Warrior conversation because one thing I did notice that I wanted to bring up for the conversation's sake is the older generation, I don't know which one of you made that point, voted heavy on Jerry Maguire. Right. Heavy on Jerry Maguire. Right. And when you look at other votes in terms of movies that lost on here, Facebook and Twitter were significantly different than Instagram. And you, that has to do generational. Yeah, 100%. Which I think is why Jerry Maguire moves on over Warrior. That's right. a that's a very interesting social experiment right there. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think also part of it's social too. media experiment, which also ruins your point about saying how if you didn't see the movie, then it makes it a bad movie. True. No, no, no I just said no, no, no. I, it, that makes my point. That's why I didn't vote for it. You mm-hmm. didn't vote for Warrior because you hadn't seen it. Yeah. Now let me ask you this, both of you: Do you think a lot more people did that? Yes. Yeah. Really? I think a lot of people voted on. A, what they heard on like when when uh, commercials came out, I think people went on what was the higher seed in certain movies too. That's what I think happened too. That's why Band News Bears won. Fair. And yeah, gen- that's what I said. Right. That's exactly what I said. It's more commercialized. And longevity of the movie, I feel like when you and there's two of them. So they had the original, and then they had the new one, which also sequel- take an effect of when you heard it. Of it. Right. Because you might be voting for Bad News Bears, and you might have been a kid that only saw Bad News Bears 2, which you shouldn't see ever anyways. Like, don't see it. It's bad. Yeah. 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 It's not great. See the original. But to your point, that makes so much sense. Right. And I'd love to know how, you know, write in on the Facebook, um, write in on the uh, Twitter, the Gram, call us 609807 like Mikey just did, and let us know your voting thought process. I want to stay on this conversation, fellas, because... 
we were talking about a lot of different movies that we didn't like before the show got started that lost. So I want to list off a few. Um, Rory mentioned Cinderella Man before. Okay, Mike obviously mentioned uh, Warrior. But the other two that I wrote down, um, and I don't know if you have any others, Little Giants. Now, they were a 10 seed that lost to a 7 seed in Creed. Right, that was a tough matchup. Tough matchup, but I really did feel like Little Giants would reign there. So did I. And then the other one was any given Sunday, the 4 seed losing – to number 13, The Rookie. So yeah, now, I was surprised about that one. So was I. And, and Invincible, a 12 seed, beat Ford versus Ferrari, a 5 seed. Yeah, that's that's definitely interesting voting. I think so. My take on the Invincible one is that Invincible's, again, been around longer than Ford versus Ferrari. When did Ford versus Ferrari come out? In 2019, correct? And I'm going to confirm that. Yeah, last yes, year. I believe so it was like, last year. And it's, it's newer. But it's almost like it hasn't had that longevity enough for a lot of people to see it, yeah. regardless of how good it may have been. Yeah. Rotten Tomatoes, 92%. Right. And Invincible, the story is pretty solid. And on top of that, it's been around for a while. You put it on the TV, it could be on TNT, TBS, whatever station it was on, and you're going to watch it. it. Yeah. Mark Wahlberg. People love Mark he's, Wahlberg. He's either a Philly character or a Boston character. Yeah, it's only, he's either <laughs> of the two. That's it. And plus, we talked about this last week, though, right? Football movies step above, but that's why I was shocked that any given Sunday lost. That's true. Because of like yeah, I was like to the rookie. Yeah, but that's a losing to a baseball movie. I feel like that's a fair. But how many Dennis Quaid friends are there? Fans are. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't know any of his friends. He's not bad. Well, he's not bad. But what I'm saying is like when you think of like Dennis Quaid, like Mark Wahlberg, some of these guys like. Adam Sandler and multiple of these well, movies. Dude, you're, it's you're, like Dennis Quaid. No, that's a good point because Dennis Quaid beat Pacino. Right? right. Exactly. That's what, beat, exactly what I'm dude, saying. He it's beat, a shot. Uh, uh, they just they just won again. Dude, he beat he beat LT. Yeah. He beat Jim Brown. Yeah. Like I mean, he beat some. He beat LL Cool J. <laughs> I mean, that's I mean that's a star studded. He beat Jamie Foxx, dude. He beat Steve <laughs> Cool Beeman. I mean, he was with Beeman. With, with Beeman. Oh man, that's it's such a good movie. Actually, exactly. out of all of them, people, that, that's the most. That might the, be the one that pisses me off. That's the the I had to go to my elite. I mean, that's a listen. Here's the deal. That's a true thirteen four upset. It is. Mm-hmm. Blizzy, you see it every year in the tournament, folks. You know, you got to really cheer for the Cinderella's <laughs> out there, not the Cinderella men. The <laughs> Cinderella's, right? You really got to cheer for them. I mean, this is a real life tournament we've got going on. But that's here. the fun part about this whole there thing. There are so many parallels to the NCAA basketball tournament based on how these people are voting. All four nine seeds advanced, a 12 seed. An 11 seed 13. and a 13 seed all advanced. Honestly, I really, you know, when you hear something like that, that's when, that's when you really got to go back. And you really got to tap the uh, selection committee on the back. <laughs> hey, you know what? You guys, you two guys did a really good job ranking these opponents and really putting together a solid tournament for Wait, parody. Before, before we <laughs> tap ourselves on the back too quickly, before we snap right. for the collection committee, we have to say one thing that we messed up on. Moneyball? Yeah. Moneyball. Yeah. It hasn't been talked about since the selection show last Monday. Okay. Rocky and I labeled Moneyball a four seed, and a little shot out is the best way you could probably put it. We didn't put it on the bracket. So shout out to Moneyball, because I believe, it, it's, this is my opinion, it's at least a Sweet 16 team, maybe even an Elite 8 team in this bracket, right? So I don't know how we did it. I don't know why it happened, but the one place we messed up is Moneyball is not in this bracket. So Listen, the NIT needs a one seed. <laughs> <laughs> Which we got a lot of people, and my mom, shout out to Deb. This was her idea. She, she said, what happens for all the teams that don't make it? How about we have an NIT? <laughs> and then I said, you know, Moneyball would leave that off. Karate Kid. Babe. Babe. <laughs> Rory wants to make a note that Babe should be in the bracket. It should be a sports movie. Why? A pig playing a sheepdog? It's incredible. What's an underdog story? <laughs> he thinks it's a better underdog story. It's a better story, story than Rudy. 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 <laughs> Jeez. And, We've had a, and cars can't make it? Come on. Well, it's again, no, it comes, in the NIT, you can, why not? Well, and someone made this argument to me. I don't know when it was, maybe a day or two after the show. They were like, yo, you said cars can't be on it because it's an animated movie, but what about Space Jam? 
And I felt like I said something about it last week, but I'm going to say it again. Like, the reason, a real person. right? The reason why Space Jam's is different than Cars is Cars is all animated. Half of Space Jam's is by regular human beings that are making a normal movie. That's the difference. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I was really surprised. And, and Rory was a big proponent of believing that Space Jam's was our weakest of the four one speed seeds. We all agree. Still do. Space Jam's is the weakest of the four, but. Right now, we got all four one seeds in, and they won by handily one in their margins. Listen, I'm telling you, the selection committee did a great job. Should we give out the Sweet 16? Yeah. Do we want to go to commercial first? Well, we have a few minutes before we go to commercial. So, uh, we, so let's well, give it you out. missed the movie on there. There's one more. Didn't you write down Hooters? Oh, that's right. From the first round, Hoosiers was knocked out of the tournament. They lost to Angels in the Outfield. Angels in the outfield. And again, it's good. both good. Seven to ten matchup. Angels in the outfield seven, Hoosiers ten. But I'm not surprised by that. See, I I'm not chose Hoosiers. By it, but I picked Hoosiers and I'm mad. Hoosiers has well. never really done it for me. Why? Well, this is where we get to the opinionated stuff. I just, I don't, you know, I just don't, it just never really, like, I think Coach Carter's a better basketball movie to me than Hoosiers. I well, agree. I agree. 100%. 100% agree with you. Yeah. But and, if I'm, and Angels in the Outfield is your first, next to Rookie of the Year, Angels in the Outfield was the first baseball movie you ever saw as a kid. So you have more nostalgia in our generation with Angels in the Outfield. Is than that the first baseball movie I ever saw? Hoosiers, you, the first time you saw Hoosiers... You were at a professional sports game, and they played Gene Hackman on the Jumbotron clapping. <laughs> Come on! That's a fair Here we go! Yeah. Every, right. that, I mean, that's how you know Hoosiers. Yeah. But I still, I was still surprised by the fact that it got slaughtered. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like a – some of these races have been like 48 to 52 percent down the line really tight. Do you think – here, how I got this one now. Do you think that if the natural played Angels in the Outfield, the natural would have beat Angels in the Outfield? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But I think you could do that with a lot of matchups. Like I think if Million Dollar Baby, uh, excuse me, if the replacements played not Million Dollar Baby, I feel like the replacements might still be in this tournament. Oh, and we have another phone call on the line. Nick, what are you calling? Tell us what you're talking about. Hey, how's it going? I was just uh, looking over your bracket here, and uh, I saw a couple questionable seeds. Love it. <laughs> what do you got for us, Nick? Uh, all the number ones make sense, I got to say. The number twos make sense up until when I see Rudy at number two. It just it's baffled my mind a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Tell me. Talk to me. Now, I know I have a little insight on this, Nick, because of Rory. But uh, give me your 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 strong, true opinion on Rudy. No holdbacks. I'll tell you, Rudy. I, I know Rudy beats the Gridiron Gang with the 15 seed, but there's no way it gets past Kevin Cosner with 10 cup. There's <laughs> no I, way. You said that, but see, Nick, this is the problem, though. I think this is where it comes down to. I think us that like 10 cup over that are in the minority compared to the average person voting for this bracket. That's true, but yeah. I just think Rudy. People watch Rudy; they think about the kid playing football. But the the real star of that movie is the father that's grinding out in that steel mill the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I texted Rory and I said, "Rudy, too, the father's sacrifice." <laughs> Dude, I think I think the most I mean the most important thing that came out of Rudy is the relationship between John Favreau and Vince Vaughn. I think. True. Yeah. I mean, that's where the, I mean that. I mean, that's comedy for generations to come, thanks to Rudy. I mean, that gets a couple of votes right there. That's pretty funny. What else you got for us, Nick? Uh, I think like uh, my final my final four in this bracket. I mean, you're not going to beat Rocky. You're not going to beat the Miracle. You know, what I mean, you go to the other side. Like Space Jam is like a cult classic. It's going to make its way to the top, no matter what. I, I could watch it all day. True. Happy Gilmore. I, I, I mean, I would see it. I would see it going pretty deep. Probably might be number one. Remember, the Titans just doesn't do it for me. I, I got to say, I know it's like a big, a, like a big following itself, but Denzel just doesn't do it for me in that movie. I don't know what it is. Really? That might be the yeah. first time I've really heard that opinion, Nick. 
I know. I, I mean, it gets deep. Don't get me wrong. It's a number one seed. It's a true number one. Wow. But you know, I respect there's, you, something, Nick? there's something about it. I just can't you know, I respect it. you, Nick. Because I'm you sorry? can legitimately sit here and say you don't like a movie, but agree it's a one seed. That's respect. Yeah, no, I, I know it's I, 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 it's a good movie. I, I'm just I just don't think it wins this this side of the bracket. Who do you Nick? who do you have winning that side over Remember the Titans? Happy Gilmore all the way. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right, dude. Really? See, I remember the I see I remember the Titans. Winning. So uh, uh, I got Happy Gilmore winning wow. that bracket too. Nikki. Nikki, I mean the, the Legend of Bagger Vance uh, doesn't even. I don't even think it would. If they played a golf game, I don't think it'd be close. Try and go again. Nikki. Yeah. It's Rory. Hey, what's up? How we doing? We're doing Did pretty you, good. That given Sunday lost, how do you feel about that? Didn't even make it out of the 64. Oh, yeah. You agree with that? Who did it lose to? It lost to, it lost to the rookie, right? Rookie, the rookie. The rookie with uh, Dennis Quaid? Yeah. Over I don't know. I, Jamie Foxx. I don't, I don't. I just don't. Again, like the rookie, like oh, he's a school teacher, and then all of a sudden he's playing professional baseball. It, <laughs> it's a little bit of a stretch. That's the that's the problem with some of the sports movies is they stretch out the plot, and it's it becomes like unbelievable. But is it? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Any given Sunday, you know, they just let the they let the pressure of the tournament get to them. They didn't come in with a good game <laughs> plan, and, and their big guys didn't hit three pointers. I mean, that that's kind of it. You know, it's. You know, the proof is in the yeah, I mean, here. People just aren't prepared to play in the first couple of rounds. I mean, it's essentially Quaid versus Quaid, right? So, <laughs> true. Dude, so that's the biggest impact. Yeah, yeah. give it something, yeah. Eddie. Give it yeah. something. That's a great point, Eddie. Yeah. You can't even yeah. 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 Great point, Eddie. So, people like Quaid on the hill. They like him on the rubber. They don't like him in, in pants. Isn't Quaid a true – isn't that a true story, the rookie? Yes. Kind of. Yeah, based on a true story. Yeah, Jim dude. Morris, who had a brief but famous Major League Baseball career from 1999 to 2000. Dude, wow. Jimmy Morris. That's, I mean, any given Sunday is star-studded. It is star-studded. Mm-hmm. And Jamie Foxx plays a quarterback. He looks like Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Dude. I know. Nick, you got anything else for us, man? They run an option play. Buddy. I got I got one closing thing, and I'll hang up. I'll let you guys talk about it. I got to say, I've been, I've been behind this fact for a while. I think Keanu Reeves was the best movie quarterback out of any of the, the football movies. Wow. The guy was working on a boat. Respect. They pulled him out of scrubbing the bottom of ships to step in and take a team to the playoffs, and he did it. He did. It's and, a, that's a uh, true Cinderella story. <laughs> I'll tell you what. It's an unpopular opinion because everybody wants to say, like, uh, the guy from Varsity Blues or even uh, Willie Beeman himself, but you can't go wrong with Keanu under center, so. Nah, you know, once he got over the fact that he blew the game from betting, I think he was. I think he was a great quarterback after that. Nah, dude, so, Keanu cool. was the man, dude. Yeah. I like. I like that call, but I'm a. I'm a James Vanderbeek, Jonathan Boxing guy <laughs> myself. You know, Boxy, dude. Yeah. Nick, man, I hope this becomes a regular thing because I appreciate your insight and appreciate you following along. Hey, thank you. No problem, man. Thank Later, you. Later, Later. Good guy. A lot of great takes out of him. He's great. That last one might have been the best take I've heard on the show. Dude, Keanu's a great actor. I mean, he's listen, like how many times? How many times? Did, how many times did Keanu make it on the board? I mean, he's on there twice. I mean, he's on there as a quarterback, and no one knows this, but he's on there as a goalie in Youngblood. Oh, he's the goalie in Youngblood, so he's in there for two movies. And he's in Hardball. He's in Hardball. He's also in Hardball. He's in Hardball. Keanu, Keanu makes the tournament three different times. Yeah. Well, that's a, which is impressive. So and does Sandler. Though. Sandler does. And who else? Sandler makes a lot, dude. Jay, does, who is it? Um, Tom Cruise makes a few. Cruise is in Days of Thunder. He's in Jerry Maguire. And we just played uh, Quaid makes a few. We just Quaid and the rookie. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. think about it. How many? We'll have to go through that. And he's always playing an old dude. Like the guys, like guys, been playing a 40, 42 year old his whole career. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Technically, Sylvester Stallone's in two, in Creed and Rocky. And Rocky, that's right. Yeah, definitely. Is Wahlberg in two? Wahlberg's in Invincible. And the fighter. And the fighter. Fighter, yeah. And the fighter. Which lost. Um, Will Ferrell's in multiple. Will Ferrell's in, yeah, yeah, he's in a lot. 
Oh, wow. Will Smith made a couple, right? Will Smith was in Legend of Bagger Vance. And Ollie. And Ollie. You know who I was talking about the other day who was in a lot? It was Bill Murray. Bill Murray? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Because he's in Space Jam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's in Tin Cup. And he's in um, and he's in uh, Kingpin. And, and Will Ferrell. Multiple. Yeah, right. Excuse me. Uh, uh, and uh, Vince Vaughn. Yeah, Vince Vaughn's Multiple. in a couple. He's got the Dodge ball, ball. And he's got yeah. Rudy. <laughs> like, a lot of people yeah. make it on here twice. Yeah. You don't realize it. No, though. I know. LT. Makes it on just once. Is know? it just one? It's just Waterboy. No, no, Waterboy never even said it. Oh, that's great. I know. Wow, that's great. I know. So multiples of multiples of people on we gotta this pay the bills. list. We do have to pay the bills. Who's in Ford vs. Ferrari? It's Christian Bale. Is he in? That's it. Just I think Matt that Damon. The only other one. Matt Damon's. Oh, and Victus didn't make Victus. Victus. No. Yeah, wow. Well, I never saw Vegas. So it's not good. So it's not good. It's trash. That would be your right. It's a, it's a bottom 80. Yeah. I got to be honest with you. If you talk to some of my like you know closest friend circles throughout the course of my life, they would say I am, you know, I, I, they would have put me You were same, rotten tomato. They were rotten tomato. I'm telling you, they would have put me at the same level as Siskel and Eber, but like I'm probably the class below. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, Steve, before we take a break, let's take this next caller. This is going to be 10 minutes. You want to catch it on the back? Stevie. No, I don't because we'll lose him. Uh, uh, we'll take the caller, uh, told, Steve. Oh, uh, he told you it was me? Welcome to the Rome Show. Oh, uh, wait. I'm so sad I had a better entrance than this. Oh, well, let's start over. Hey. Caller, give us your name and what you're calling for. This is a wheelchair tipper from Nebraska, Nebraska <laughs> calling in. <laughs> Dynamite! <laughs> What's up, baby? How you doing? Good, man. How you doing? We're doing all right. It's me. It's Rory. It's Rocky. It's the Rome Show. You know the deal. Um, obviously. Oh, the we, Triple R tonight. We, yeah, it's full crew. We miss you, but you're on the phone, so what do you got for us? Honestly, I just got off dinner and having some some uh, adult beverages, so uh, kind of trying to figure out what you guys are talking about. Well, your brother called in before. I don't know if you know that. And oh, that he guy. talked about how he was super disappointed that Warrior lost. We also just had a call in from Rory's boy, Nick, who made some valiant points, one of which being that Keanu Reeves is the best quarterback on this bracket. So that's what we're talking about. Ooh. Yeah, I don't right. uh, Mike Winchell, Friday Night Lights. I don't know. Yeah, wow. Wow. Hey, that's a great response, Steve. That's my boy. That's Steve coming through. <laughs> I love Steve. Dude, I, I mean, Mike is the man, dude. I mean, Mike yeah, Winchell's I mean, yeah. But you also got to remember, Winchell only got one one attempt at winning a championship. You got to remember, Keanu Reeves and replacements. That was his second attempt because he blew it when he was at Florida State. What's the point? <laughs> Give Mike Winchell another boy, chance, and we'll see the All right, <laughs> that's a great point out of you, Steve. Also, I wanted to ask you. Um, I saw on your bracket you had the longest yard going to the Elite Eight. I think is that is that real life? Oh yeah, I mean Adam Sandler's top three quarterback in that whole entire you know bracket. What does he be on the way to the Elite Eight? There, you have to be well. I just want to let you know, live on air, Steve, that unfortunately the longest yard is no longer in the tournament. Longest yard got beat by who? The longest yard. Did it beat by? Happy Gilmore lost to Happy Gilmore. I mean, have, I mean, Adam Sandler Adam versus Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Is the same time you guys have not, the same. not. Hey, 90s Adam Sandler was his prime, I guess. So I guess we'll go with that. Well, at the end I mean, of the day, at the end of the day, the longest the yard wasn't going to make it deep anyway, <laughs> so. So I have a question for you, three, since we're standing here. I know the two of you, we've talked about this, but Rocky, I know we haven't. Was Rudy offside? Was Rudy offside? We can, we'll defer that question to Rory. Oh, that's such a bad question. So is that is that true? No, it's not true. Was he offside? I don't even know. I've never even paid so attention yeah. to that <laughs> I was a, until I was an adult. And someone brought it to my attention. And I just said, you're hating on Rudy. That's ridiculous. Why would you even want to try and prove that to be true? Do you, want, Are you asking? do you want to bring down like one of the greatest like uplifting stories in the history of sports? Yes, he does. I don't think it is. I completely disagree with that. Oh my gosh! There's Why? so many so then, uplifting stories. Oh really? Because you were, you know what? That's because you were born above five nine. <laughs> <laughs> that argument has not been made back to you yet. Yeah, dude, because hey, it's a great argument, dude. I'm telling you, dude. No, you don't identify. 
It's not an underdog story. You can't. Yes, it is. Get different parents. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> oh God. You're just you're, you're making yourself look bad. No, what I'm like, it's not an underdog story. It really is not to me. I don't think it is. I think Hollywood made it more than it is. So do you you think that Dodgeball, Average Joe's Gymnasium, is more of an underdog story <laughs> than Rudy is? When did I say Dodgeball is a better I'm underdog just, story? No, he's I'm asking. asking. I'm just asking. asking. No, I, I'm not. It's a fictional story. I'm talking about real life stories. There are so many better sports stories. So the rookie is a better underdog story? I would argue that yes. He made it to professionals. And he did more than Rudy, which was two plays. So what do you tell the uh, like the hundreds of thousands of Division One athletes who never make it to pro football? Like that is their that is them. No, it. what I'm saying is Rudy did two plays. There is other sports and there's other athletes who have overcome more. They get no recognition. The USC blind snapper that is awesome. That is he a gets great a story. highlight on Sports Center. No one talks about it. Well, when did I, that happen? When did that I, happen? Last year. Okay, dude, there's not enough time to make a movie about it. Doesn't it doesn't matter, though. What I'm saying is these stories aren't getting recognition. His point is is that that should be a story that gets hyped up. Like the New York Giants beating the New England Patriots is the epitome of an underdog story. That is the perfect underdog story. Miracle, the perfect underdog story. Those are underdog stories. Dude, yeah. Yo, Miracle happened in 1980. It didn't have a movie until when did the movie happen? Happen? until, until two thousand four. No, when did the movie come out? The movie come out? I have no idea. Ninety nine. Uh, no, no, no. Let's 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 put it. Let's put Rudy had to have come out. I think ninety three. I want to say ninety one. Ninety three. Woo! Wow, nice. So Rudy let's go. Ninety three, and it's set in the seventies. I thought so. Twenty three years. So your blind snapper has twenty more years, and then you can make your argument. No, I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I'm saying it's not a good story. I said Hollywood made it a good movie. I don't think it's a good story to get all the publicity that it got. There's a lot better stories. I know a Division One athlete tore ACL three times, horrific car accident. She's the leading scorer at her institution. These stories never that happens get every, told. That happens every day. Exactly. So why aren't those – why is Rudy a better story than not? It's because not. In, because in 1970, no one from a blue-collar factory worker – How do you know that? even How showed do you know up that? to Notre Dame and then walked on to the football team with zero athletic ability. And then – He got two up, plays, though. Ended up where his entire team sacrificed themselves so that he could even dress for the game. Okay. You're telling me that that's not a feel-good, up, uplifting, I underdog did. story? I don't that think guy I had no business no, no. being in the Notre Dame locker room. Okay, but I'm saying there's better stories person than that. Who there's gets, absolutely better stories than every that. Day, I, there's, every day, 10 athletes tear their ACL. It's commonplace. Dude, the fact that you would say that like drives me nuts. Well, have you ever torn your ACL? Have you ever talked to an athlete that tore their ACL? Listen, I'm Ask not them how saying, they come back from it. I'm not have saying, yes or no? I'm not have saying, yes or no? Because now you're coming to my territory and like, no, dude. <laughs> have you yes or no? Yeah, I have talked to and seen people overcome ACL injuries right. in person. Mm-hmm. Here's what I will tell you. Your argument for that and this, they don't even belong in the same I category. completely disagree. Well, this has been fun, guys. We're going to need the bills really real quick disagree. here. All right, Rube, so. Wait, Romo, Romo, one more question. Oh, Steve, Steve still, still on the phone. <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I had to hear this one go out, but I guess this one a lot longer than expected. All right, so out of your bracket, who wins in a high school football game? The Permian High School football team from Friday Night Lights or the West Canaan Varsity Blues high school team? Coyotes, by the way, but I like this. This is a great one. Nice Ooh. job, Steve. Honestly, that's a good question. Now, who's the starting quarterback for West Canaan? What was that? Sorry, I couldn't hear you guys. Who's the starting quarterback for West Canaan? Jonathan Moxon. Does it have to be? Yes. I'm taking Friday Night Lights. That's a way more BA set of individuals that was playing probably a way higher level of football that had to go to the state title like that. No? Is Varsity Blues just no, not? Varsity Blues is not a true. No, that's 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 that is 100 I was like, why am I thinking of like, uh, to answer that question? Blue Mountain State. I'm like, that reminds me of that's what it reminds me I take Friday Night Lights. Yeah. yeah, Friday night. Yeah, Friday night lines wins that game. For I, sure. I think they win that game. Panthers. You want Bill Mox Mox Orton. You want Moxon to win, but he's probably not going to win. No, well, I mean, it's you have a, a coaching staff and a game plan versus you know just you know throwing against the wall with <laughs> sticks, throwing football. Uh, I don't know, no, dude. If they run the oop de oop, though, it's going to put Bernie's <laughs> defense on their heels. <laughs> uh, and 
We're going to pay some bills. Andrew Romanello, Rocky Romanello, Rory Gallagher here on the Rome Show, March 20th. We will be back releasing the Sweet 16 of the Rome Show Madness here in a moment. Clap. That's how you do it. What are we on next? We're going to do the Sweet 16. Did you announce all the who won? No, I'm about to do that. Choose for 16. Yeah, we're at choose like West, West Wives. My team's one of my team's won. So you're out on everyone? No. The most of them are. Rue! Alright, well, I'll do the commercial then. This commercial break brought to you by TightenTheLugNuts.com. Head to Tighten the Lug Nuts and pick up your copy of Tighten That's the Lug Nuts. In, in sports do. or in life. And you haven't found a book yet to help you get to that game changing aha moment. Well, we have the book for you. Tighten the lug nuts, the principles of balanced leadership. Tighten the lug nuts will help you get to that game changing leadership moment. Available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and iBooks or at 360managementservices.com. That's the number 360managementservices.com. Pick up your copy today and start changing your leadership style. Fuck. All right. Welcome back into the Rome Show here. March 30th, 2020. It is about 7.47 here in Andrew Romanello's apartment in Morristown, New Jersey. We are recording remotely here on HamiltonRadio.net, Channel 2, Hamilton Radio app, Facebook.com, slash Andrew.Romanella. The lines are open all night long, 609-807-2492. Who would have thought that... When we're in our apartment, we get the most amount of callers. It's got to be because everyone's quarantined. Probably. I hope it's because you all like this show that much, but if it's probably not, and the truth is the matter is you're probably just bored, we'll we appreciate you. So here's what we're going to do. All right? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go over the Sweet 16 of Rome Show Madness. Okay? The voting finished up tonight for the round of 32, and we had a lot of really good matchups, and I appreciate the over... Gosh, we've probably gotten over combined on each game in the three days over about 500 people to tune in and vote. So um, we super appreciate that. Today's numbers were the biggest we've had in the first three rounds, an average of about 160 people voted um, for each movie matchup. So keep that up. We super appreciate that. And even though um, some of you may not have turned in the bracket that you filled out, a bunch of you did, we'll be going over the numbers I will be tonight into tomorrow and sending out a leaderboard for who's currently winning the Rome Show Bracket Challenge. We're going to be giving away sports tickets whenever those dates eventually come back and we can give tickets uh, to somebody probably thinking an NFL game right now. And then there will be a second place prize, which will go to the person with the second best bracket and they get a full hour on the show. So as Rory sits here right now and is a part of the show, the second place winner will have the option to do so as well. Um, if they want to defer that, they can defer to gear. And yeah, that oh, sounds good to me. Oh, Mike is second. All right. I, I hope Mike, Mike McCrossin McCross gets second so badly. So badly. Mike, you hear me out there? I hope it's you, kid. When are we going to have standings out? Standings will be out tomorrow. Nice. So standings will be out tomorrow. I know the people are excited. And, and hey, listen, if you followed along on your own fill-in bracket, but you didn't email it to the Rome Show one at gmail.com, that's completely okay. But email it to the Rome Show one at gmail.com so I can put you on the official leaderboard or text me, whatever, dude. Just figure it out. Just so I can see your bracket. We have 36 officially submitted brackets right now, but I know there are about 50 or 60 out there. So any of the people that want to get in on the prize, it's okay. We take trust system here on the Rome Show, but uh, send in your bracket to the Rome Show one at gmail.com. Boys, are you ready for the Sweet 16? Let's hear it. All right. Sweet 16 voting will open up. Well, we got a lot of people on the Facebook. Much appreciated. Sweet Oh, I messed up the date again. Sweet 16 voting will start Wednesday. April 1st, mother, Wednesday, April 1st, April Fool's Day, and in the Sweet 16, I'm going to read it from the official bracket because last time I didn't read it from the official bracket, Moneyball wasn't on the bracket. So, a one versus four, excuse me, one versus five matchup, top left region, Rocky versus Dodgeball. A six versus two matchup, a league of their own, Versus a true American underdog story in Rudy. 
In the top right, we have a one seed, remember the Titans, against a four seed, Talladega Knights. I don't sleep on that matchup. Do that's not sleep on that matchup. Yeah, that's a don't big, sleep yeah. on it. I'm nervous about that one now. Continuing in the top right region, we have half, excuse me, Mighty Ducks, a three seed, against Happy Gilmore, a two seed. That's a good matchup. Great matchup. And then finishing off in the bottom right region, we have Space Jams, a one seed, against a true, fellas, a true underdog story, a George Mason 06 of their time, a Mercer against Duke. We have the rookie, a 13 seed, taking on Michael Jordan and the Looney Tunes as a one seed. And to finish off your bracket, and then the floor is both of yours to give me your opinions on these matchups. That's all of them? What do you want the bottom left? To finish off the bracket, and then the floor is yours to give your opinions. You forgot the bottom left, though. Caddy, I said it already. Caddyshack, a three seed against Friday Night Lights, a two seed. And to finish off the bottom left, Miracle, a one seed against Major League, a four seed, which Major League upset the water boy. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the tightest matchups we have had. Major League received 88 of the votes. Waterboy received 77 of the votes. And then the, finally, a three seed, the Sandlot, against the two seed, Field of Dreams. That is your Sweet 16, ladies and gentlemen. The voting will be open on Wednesday for that. Fellas, how do we feel? I, I got I to gotta be honest with you. I, again, I'm just going to have to just go ahead and, and just – Props to the selection committee. I mean, as you go through the Sweet 16, there really isn't there really isn't a bad matchup. I mean, the Rocky dodgeball matchup is an intriguing matchup. Now, very I don't believe Rocky's going to lose, right? But I do think that you're going to see, you know, the percentages closer than you think. Um, I think another one right here too is, you know, just based on how much the rookie slaughtered any given Sunday. Just yeah. out of slaughter. Yeah. I mean, you've got to think Space Jam is going to feel the heat a little bit from the Cinderella story. Do you think that the rookie legitimately has a chance to beat Space Jams? You know, in my reality, which I like to think is normal, the answer is no. But you never know. Well, I have a take. Give it what a if people are like, like my bracket screwed for the most part? What if people? Vote against what the other, what they think other people. You know, that's a, will vote against. This is a concern of mine because, and, and so Rory makes a really good because, point, like, right? if you have, if people like, let's be honest, I have Rocky in my final four. Right. I'm assuming most people do. Right. All those people who didn't put in their bracket, what if they all vote dodgeball? Right. Or maybe am I just making out there that now they have everyone has this idea and I'm just screwed up. You own. you could have just told them all the idea, I but I feel like people are messed up enough that I've already done this. I don't think. No, you're not picking the bracket. Based on, I'm talking about trying, the fan voting. I'm just yeah. saying, yeah, but if the fans are voting based on how they pick their bracket, then they're going to pick the movie that they like is best. Yeah, but right. his point is that if we get to the Sweet 16 and a team that I had, like Steve has the longest yard going to the Elite Eight. Well, he doesn't want that team winning because he doesn't want to look dumb, so he wants that team to lose. Which so team does, is that? Does he vote against? He he was the longest yard versus Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. Oh right, well, that's just a bad pick. Sorry, man. I'm not Steve, so now, so. so now, but do you think Happy, I didn't make that pick. Like his point is, he going to vote against Happy Gilmore? Now? Right. I mean, it's possible. And there's more people right? who who vote online than put in their bracket, so that could skew and, yes. the winner of who's actually going to get the bracket. And what's really funny about this whole thing is people get really mad at me. <laughs> like, here's, <laughs> here's what I'll say: it's very, it's very sports-like. It is, is it not? It is unpredictable. Right. Which is what you know. Which is why we're doing it because that's lie. what we're missing. I thought that was going to be one of those things like unpredictable, tough. Like you just stopped <laughs> at one word. <laughs> unpredictable. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was going to be like comma comma and. <laughs> nah, 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 it's unpredictable. It's just like sports. So, and I'm looking at it now, and honestly, um, the question I have now for you two gentlemen off of this Sweet 16 is, we kind of talk about it with space times. Will a one seed lose, or will every one seed make it to the elite eight? <sighs> No, I think I think um, I think there's going to be an upset. I think there will only be two number one seeds in the final four. You think it's Rocky and Miracle? Yes. Do you think Sandlot's going to beat? I'm um, sorry, not Sandlot. You think uh, Rotan's going to lose? Happy Gilmore? I do. 
Interesting. Now remember, listen, remember the Titans has to get through Ricky Bobby. First. I, and I'm not gonna right. lie to you. You're right. When I filled out my bracket putting remember the Titans in the final four, I did not even think, right. like think that that would even come close. But now that I've seen the way the voting's done, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. And by the way, I, I mean, Mighty Ducks. Will a miracle win? <laughs> I mean, the Mighty Ducks <laughs> might, might be I'm so mad. The Mighty Ducks might be happy no more. It could. It could. You see, this is the thing, though. It is. When I, when I first, when we per, first put this bracket together and friends started writing in or Rory was giving me comments in the chat or we were talking about it. Quarantine Cardigan. It felt like, shout out Quarantine Cardigan. It felt Mo, like. Shout out to Mo. <laughs> are you? It felt like. Skimo Pugs. Yeah, it felt like to me, it was self-explanatory. But then, so this is where Straight Off the Rome came from today. Because I said to myself, people are super opinionated with their movies because I would think and assume that certain movies would have won, but I couldn't have been more wrong. Yeah. And realizing what other people think about when they want to watch a sports movie, what sports movies they're tailored to, what their generation liked over the other. I mean, like, people were pissed about The Natural. Like, pissed. And I'm like, I didn't even know people knew who Roy Hobbs was, let alone all these people are mad about it. So that was really surprising to me. And that's why I think that, like, if I look at these matchups, I'm like, dude, Rocky's going to beat Dodgeball. Come on. But you know what? There might be more people out there that like Vince Vaughn and Dodgeball over the movie Rocky. And we, there, there's a serious chance Rocky doesn't make it to the Elite Eight. There's not. Are you sure? Yeah. Because I watched Rocky yesterday, and I've seen Dodgeball a million times, and I like Rocky. I still might put dodgeball on first. Like, <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, but that's entertainment value. That's not sports. But that's not. But you can't have that opinion on the person voting. They might choose the movie because of that. I don't think that you're right here. Okay. I think that Rocky is going to win. And I chose Rocky to win. So you're like, saying that just because it's your name? <laughs> <laughs> and I voted for Rocky. I think that any movie that can transcend a city, uh, like a city is transcendent on a fictional character from a sporting standpoint like that's pretty powerful like there's no statue of white good men there's no statue of the average Joe guy but there is a statue in Philadelphia of Rocky that people still go to today and cheer as though he was a real human and I run agree. up those stairs yes. and do the, the hand they thing do. yeah I'm still, I'm, not, I'm still nervous, though. I'm very nervous. Okay, and then the other one. See, I'm less nervous, and Rory, this might bother you, but I'm less nervous about Rudy beating League of Their Own. Oh, I, yeah, no, yeah, I know that. I actually think now. Rudy now has the best track. I, I, can we talk about League of Their Own? Like, good yeah. for them. I know, <laughs> yeah, like, we're <laughs> well, yeah. like, Tom I'm Hanks. kind of surprised. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah, League of Their Own had to beat Kingpin, which right. was a Nick that re- – no, 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 he referenced Tim Cup. A League of Their Own had to beat Kingpin – and then Raging Bull. Yeah, Raging Bull's a good and movie. And two own. good movies that they that it took down. Right. Yeah. And and movies that would be voted on by the same type of generation. Right. That's not far off. I mean, Raging Bull might be a little bit farther off than Kingpin and, and League of Their Own, but took down De Niro, man. Tom Hanks. There's no crying in baseball. Range more true than I think any of you believe. It is that's one thing. of those that's one of those classics though. It's classics that everyone can watch and like. I don't disagree. All right. I'm going to count down to five, okay? It's Happy Gilmore versus Mighty Ducks. Shout out the Mel Robbins show. Okay, we're going to count down to five. Both of you are going to scream out the first thought of which one wins that matchup, okay? Mighty Ducks versus Happy Gilmore. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy Gilmore. Gilmore. Wow. Yeah, I think it's Gilmore too. But not by a lot. I was going to say Mighty Ducks. I don't know why. I think it's a close matchup. But I really think that, like, Happy Gilmore, more people know the quotes. They know more about it. And, like, stuff. it's more of, like, a, it sticks in your head. Like, yeah. when people go mini golf and they do the, they do the hockey. Happy, they do the exactly. Yeah. And, like, how many, yeah, how many exactly. times do you see on Instagram right. <laughs> where it's, like, 365 more days, we'll see the start. The hockey season. Like, Gotta get pumped. Exactly. <laughs> You're right. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. There's if no Mike, crying in baseball. People comment, comment. I know. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Mighty Ducks made a run, but I – Everyone who plays sports plays golf at some point. Yeah, that's fair. Everyone and, right. and everyone can everyone can relate to Happy Gilmore's anger on the golf course. <laughs> yes, one hundred percent. We got a, we got a few write-ins here that I want to shout out. Oh boy, 
Three feet or more, gentlemen. Nah, we're a little tighter than that. I said two and a half. Old school Burt Reynolds. Shout out, right? Yeah. Longest yard. Now, a lot of people also wrote in to go back to the longest yard real quick. I know it's out of the tournament, but like the original longest yard? Well, Burt Reynolds is in both. Is in both. Right. And I don't know if a lot of people realize that. He I mean, is Adam Sandler's you're, you're character. Voting, in the you're person. voting for the story the same way you like Rocky Four is in here and Rocky. It's not like Rocky One. You're talking about the Rocky series. Yes. You know right. What I'm saying? right. Yes. You're not talking and, like it's not like Mighty Ducks Two is going to make the list, but Mighty Ducks. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, someone threw a Mighty Ducks Two GIF up on Facebook the other day. People love Caddyshack, man. People love Caddyshack. Dude, I'm, Caddyshack might be in the final four. Invincible Mark Wahlberg. Hey, twelve seed made a run, but. Didn't last much longer. I watched Sandlot yesterday. I feel bad not voting for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great, honest opinion right there. All right. I'll talk about that because I'm nervous about them, too. So we have, as you said, we have about a few, few more minutes, about five minutes left if we want it. Okay. So overall, I'm going to call this the wrong show madness a, a huge success. 100%. Okay. We I'm were bracket now. Bra- that, and so let me ask you to this because obviously I'm talking to you and it's harder to talk to the Romo sapiens but and I want your opinion too as you've gotten deeper in this tournament does it frustrate even though you enjoy Rome show of madness does it piss you off more that you're finding that more people disagree with your movie takes than agree with them because it pisses me off go ahead Rory yes and no okay because a lot of the voting I did was kind of depending on, like, what do I think other people are going to vote? Too. Just like the tournament, right? Some of the movies, yes. Because I'm like, I love X video uh, movie, but, like, if if I know more people are going to vote for that one, I'm going to pick that one. Right, 100%. Because I wanted to win. But, then but the it doesn't no, matter now because I was wrong. But then the no is the fact that a movie like Warrior loses to Bad News Bears. Well, lost to. Or, um, excuse me, Warrior lost to whatever it lost to. I think it was Bad News Bears. It It might have been. No, I don't even remember. Either way, that movies like that, Cinderella Baby, are losing, and you're like, (laughs) Cinderella Baby. Cinderella, Cinderella Man. Cinderella Man. (laughs) Like that. Now I gotta look and see. Yeah, lost, uh, lost, beat Cinderella Man. Right, 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 yeah. Beat Cinderella Man. That's where it pisses me off. Not that I'm like mad at people because you have all your own opinion. You watch what movies you want, but it's just like, damn, like, am I that off? Yeah. Like, am I the minority of who likes this movie over that movie? Or is it really just that sweet? And if I had a thousand different Instagram followers, Bad News Bears might have never even been in the tournament. Maybe. I also find it interesting. I have a lot of baseball coach following on Twitter. Makes sense. So looking at the voting on Twitter is so – like, someone got mad at me on Twitter the other day because on the Twitter vote, Coach Carter, like, lost. But overall, Coach Carter won because on Facebook and Instagram, it was all added up to be greater. Simple math. And he was pissed because he's like, dude, this is rigged. I saw that Coach Carter lost on Twitter. I'm like, dude, it's all three combined. He's like, He was like mad. And I'm like, I respect the heck out of the fact that you're mad about this right now. But fair is fair. It's going to be all, all social medias. And that's how I feel you feel right now. I'm a little upset. <laughs> <laughs> i I, I got to be honest with you. Give I me. absolutely love – this where we are with this bracket. Me too. The the How could you not? Can't the, the 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 hair loss uh, for some of the people in, invested in the tournament right now just just makes me very excited. Yeah. Right. And again, I'm just gonna have to go back and just really really <laughs> commend the selection committee. You know, typically, you know, the NCAA typically tends to get something wrong, and you know, you could you could make a pretty big case for the money ball. <laughs> You know, mistake, but at the same time, you know, I just don't think they had it this year. And you know, their their RPI wasn't that good, and and they lost a couple of close games in conference, which made it tough for them. And you know, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, really only three people are complaining about Moneyball. Not one person is getting as angry as they are about that dude did about Coach Carter. So I don't even think that was a mistake. (laughs) And like, (laughs) and like when you really look down at this at the Sweet Sixteen, you're like. You know what? This might be the most competitive tournament we've had in the last five to ten years. And you know, as a committee, we might, you know, I think, you know, you got to be excited from a viewership standpoint. I think we got <laughs> something good going here. We talked about this next year. Obviously, we're all hoping we're not in a global pandemic. But uh, thinking about maybe a history movies bracket or diving deeper into the plethora of categories that there are for movies. But for the time being, 
We're going to stick to Rome Show Madness. Okay. You can find Rome Show Madness on Facebook.com slash Andrew.Romanella. On Instagram and Twitter, Coach Romo24. All right. You can email the Rome Show, the Rome Show One at gmail.com. There's so many ways to get involved. We want to thank our producer, Ruben, for allowing us to remotely uh, broadcast this show, for staying locked in the studio for us. We want to thank Mikey McCrossin, Stevie McCrossin, Nick. First time, long time for Nick and Mike. <laughs> we appreciate it. We appreciate you guys tuning into the Rome Show. Everybody on the Facebook, on the Twitter, Rory Gallagher for joining in on the show. And thank you for having me. <laughs> and Ruben wants to remind us that six feet is the laws and we are breaking them at a high rate. <laughs> no, Ruben, Ruben, I actually, no, 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 Ruben, yeah, yeah Ruben, I went family. online. Actually, Rory's breaking the law. I'm okay. I went to see Andrew at his house. <laughs> <laughs> so it's only one of us. Yeah. <laughs> we're under four people that we're not breaking the law. Right. That's a good point. But honestly, be safe out there. Stay safe. Anytime you need the Rome show as a release. I remember Rome, by the way. You got it. That's funny. Andrew Romanella, Rocky oh, Romanella, guest. Rory Gallagher, The Rome Show. We are out. Peace. Leader, whether that's in business, in sports, or in life, and you haven't found a book yet to help you get to that game-changing aha moment, well, we have the book for you. Tighten the Lug Nuts, The Principles of Balanced Leadership. Tighten the Lug Nuts will help you get to that game-changing leadership moment. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and iBooks, or at 360managementservices.com. That's the number 360managementservices.com. Pick up your copy today and start changing your leadership styles. Do this look like work to you? Nah. Looking at the life like it's all that is for me. Texting me? Go on. Rock? He goes, Sam, you're not fake. Hooray! Hey, Andrew. Good show. Good show, guys. Very good show. <laughs> yeah, I was going to tell you, um, um, that a little uh, interruption in the audio, but don't worry about it because all the audio was recorded and everything. Uh, like, only one or two people said that they couldn't hear us. It's weird. Oh really? We heard well, like we everything sounded perfect to us. Yeah, so yeah, same like, here. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, I mean, because you know we're communicating, you know, from you we're streaming and we're connecting, and also we're connecting to the online plus you know, your Facebook Live all at the same time. <laughs> right. And all, you know, also to the app. Um, hey, Andrew, did I send you that file last week? You did not. Oh, okay. Because I, I wasn't sure. Okay. okay, dude, I had a lot of people rewatch it on Facebook. Oh, okay. Because yeah. um, I'm gonna remind myself if can, um, I know. Send, can you send both to me though this week? Yes, I can. I'm actually gonna send it to tomorrow. I just wanted to double check because I it was just a busy week. I I didn't remember. Supposedly our video feed is still live. Jen just texted me said she's oh, still. Oh, 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 sorry, folks. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing bad. <happened. laughs> you think Rocky didn't say anything stupid? Wow. <laughs> Uh...